I'd like to introduce you all to our speaker today, Steve Stemple. Steve's the creator of Leap and has been actively developing the Leap application for over 10 years. He comes from a sales background in the home improvement industry, where he started in, in windows and roofing. He was a sales rep there for several years and realized that there was a lot of room for improvement. So he taught himself how to code and learned how to build a system that was scalable and that he could use to help sell more. Um, and things have certainly grown from there. Uh, so with that, I'd like to welcome Steve. Thanks for joining us today, Steve. Thanks, Kelly. If you can make me presenter, I'll take over from here. Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and send that over to you. All right, you should have that now. So it shows it shows. All right, so let me click through the slide. Obviously, everything today is you know, pandemic, pandemic, coronavirus, et cetera. So with this little chart is this slide, I wanted to start this webinar off um, just showing you some of the um, analytics that we gather here at Leap with uh, companies that are using our platform. And you can see this actually starts the January of 2019. And you can see our usage, our activity was you know just gradually increasing. Uh, in the home improvement industry, the Christmas, December time frame, uh, end of December, beginning of January, uh, you know, business kind of really dips off, especially you see a big drop off right there in December, January. And then, you know, pick right back off kind of where it's leaving off. And if you were to draw kind of a, a line there, you can see that the uh, activity, if you ignored December, January, it kind of like was steadily increasing. And then the coronavirus hit in March, everybody kind of like remote, you can see how that big valley, everything just dropped off entirely. And then, um, you know, things started to, you know, to get back and the home improvement industry kind of like benefited. We, we attribute to like people are staying home and they're starting to notice projects and stuff that need to be done in their home and they start doing things. And we had, we have, in according to our analytics, um, everything is just fully recovered. Again, if you just draw a line from that activity, uh, it's just right now, it's just steady up. Now, obviously the spike from um, April, that goes all the way up like that as since like the last six months is kind of like leveled off and again that line just continues to just steadily grow as leap grows um you know more and more customers come on but we we feel that the you know the home improvement industry has fully recovered we have uh, gotten feedback from our customers that are using the platform on things that they were able to do um to account for the changes and stuff that are needed with the virus, specifically like going digital. So a lot of this stuff around like going efficient, like the efficiency and connecting sales and production uh, was fast tracked because of the coronavirus. Uh, because it, companies who were not digital already before the pandemic hit had a much harder time than companies who were digital. Because obviously it's a lot easier to take a digital process remote than it is to take an analog process remote. So one of the other metrics is our DocuSigns. Like we have ability in our platform to send uh, documents to customers uh, that they can sign digitally through a, a product called DocuSign. Those of you who are not familiar, it's just get an email, customer can point and click and sign with their with their own device. So the usage on our DocuSign skyrocketed, you know, as expected when the pandemic hit. Uh, last year we had sent 47,000. Uh, 600 DocuSigns, um, and they were they're completed DocuSigns. That means you know sales rep, but just one was like a contract sent, and that was it. It was contract sent, customer signs it, and it came back through the system. Uh, with that translates in, I forget the exact math. I think we did about an average of eight thousand dollars per ticket, but that's roughly three hundred and eighty million dollars last year in home improvement projects just through the digital signatures. That doesn't count any way of doing. Uh, you know, a live signature or sending the customer a document electronically and having them s sign it, scan it, and send it back or however, what other service you want to use to do that. That is strictly just DocuSign through the Leap platform, $380 million in home improvement projects. Um, so, and basically the last point about anyway, technology is going to enable your entire company to do this. So it's not just about sales reps going out there and capturing, capturing new revenue, but it's also keeping it efficient um, from like maybe your production has to send an addendum, customer wants to change a color or add a product or change the contract some way, um, you know, sending addendums, how efficient are you in doing that? Like Leap has a way to account for all of those scenarios. So with the pandemic, it kind of, you know, it 
fast track that. So what's that mean for 2021? I don't think we're really going to go backwards as far as adopting technology. Any companies who have adopted technology in 2020 as a result of the pandemic have kind of embraced it. And like, okay, great, we were forced to do this. Now let's capitalize on it because people who have already uh, done this are much further ahead, obviously, than people who haven't. So what we did is uh, in this um, webinar, I want to show you just a demo of some of the key features in Leap um, and like do a real world scenario of how you can use it to make you more efficient, both in sales and in production. Um, but I gathered a couple like testimonials that we've done. We do a lot of testimonials from customers and I've gathered a couple put on slides on specifically things that uh, Leap has affected in their business. Some of these I read the whole quote, like Leap platform is uh, not, only in, uh, not only in expense savings, but it has contributed to three times revenue growth over four years without added staffing expenses. And that's basically making their existing staff more efficient by using technology. So although Leap costs money, so does hiring people. So you have the same things that you do over and over again. If you can automate those processes using technology, you know, the, the long run, it's going to save you. Now, I'm not going to read this entire quote, but there's some highlighted uh, bullet points. Um, this is from Ryan Bolin, I think I'm saying his uh, name right, sales manager at the basement doctor. Uh, a couple things make them more efficient. You only have to enter the information once into Leap. Uh, by what, what he means by that is not just the customer information, name, address, phone number, email, but also all of the measurements. So a lot of times customers want a good, better, best estimate. And, you know, whatever way you are calculating that, a lot of times that involves entering data more than once. Leap allows you to enter customer's information, product information, one time and then you know populate everywhere you need it to populate uh, reduces the amount of time spent in the house i personally used to be an in-home sales rep and i know how important it is to um, you know make the most out of the time that the customer gives you i used to do one call closes and um, when i was in the house i wanted to spend all my time building rapport and overcoming objections i didn't want to have to spend 20 30 minutes working up a price coming up with a you know a different product combination or something of that sort so it, the you know the technology leap allowed me to quickly calculate my price instantly change the product combinations quickly calculate my contract so that i made the, the most efficient use the use my time the most efficient way possible and and turn the last uh, highlighted point on this is you know, this time it could be spent uh, running other appointments and it did it allowed me to run more appointments there were some sales reps that would spend two three hours in the customer's house i was run in the house 45 minutes to an hour and a half tops i was able to you know run more appointments close more deals and i was so much more efficient than the other sales reps that were doing the same job um, advanced window systems uh, it's from patrick newman uh, using leap helped us compress time and he sales and in, in, in sales and production to make our whole customer experience better. It is a paperless system for contractors to make everything more accessible as a management system and helps you to better define and control the sales process. Um, the, the part about a paperless system to make everything more accessible, what that means is when you have field reps, whether it's sales reps or it's production reps that's going out doing remeasures or repairs, site inspections, et cetera, uh, they're out in the field and you can't have someone with them every single time that they do it. So there's kind of like a lack of transparency of what's going on out in the field. If you are able to put their entire process uh, into an application, which is what Leap is, then you can then monitor all of the data that, that they're gathering. So whether it's pictures, uh, documents that are being generated and sent only to the office, documents that are being generated and sent to the customer, um, you know, financing information. We even have down to the logs and you can look into each individual estimate and see, well, what exactly transpired on that appointment? You know, did they open the presentation? Did they go through each page of the presentation? You know, at what point did they do the contract? How long were they in the house? Sorry, did they get to their appointment on time? It has all of that information and kind of gives you a lot more transparency into what's going on out in the field. Um, this is one about DocuSign. DocuSign has been a, two, a huge time, save, time saver for us. Uh, during the pandemic, we started running virtual appointments. This has actually been a common thing that I've been hearing a lot. Uh, now we are able to do a contract with the customer via Zoom, and they can see the Leap screen. We send the customer a digital contract through Leap, and they sign via DocuSign. And we have a signed agreement with them through a virtual sale. We actually started a whole new division off of it now. That's 
Foster at Minnesota Resco. Um, this is actually something I've heard from multiple companies that they have done. Uh, I know Universal Windows Direct, I think, is another one. home. Well, now you could do them virtually. You could have a husband or wife be home and do another one virtually, whatever. Everybody joins on the Zoom and we just do it all together. So you can just make it much, much more efficient, um, much more convenient for your homeowners, sales rep, everyone involved. The, the ability to do a virtual sale, this is from Chuck Chettle at Home Smart Industries. The ability to do the virtual sale with this program, you know, by cutting out that four-hour drive, uh, to that one customer that's out in the far end of your territory, that salesperson can now run another appointment that day. That would have not been able, to, that he would not have been able to run, possibly two or three even. So this Chuck is basically saying, you know, sales reps are able to run these virtual appointments now. Where I remember when I used to do them, I'd say, uh, an hour and a half was, was, I hated those appointments. I couldn't imagine doing one three, four hour drive. Um, but, you know, this is just super efficient. You customers going to set up a uh, uh, an appointment to do a Zoom, it's much more convenient for them. They're not bringing a stranger into their house, practicing the social whole dis social distancing thing. They don't have to worry about all that. It's just a win-win. So now what I'm going to do is switch my screen. I'm going to jump into my iPad. I just want to show you a couple things. It's not just about digitizing your sales process, but I just want to show you some specific highlights in our application um, that are really tailored around doing a virtual appointment. So it shows it show my iPad screen. Okay. So uh, what you see here, this is the, the actual leap app. I'm sharing the screen on my iPad. I already have a uh, customer loaded into the app here. It's Donald Baker. This is just connecting to my CRMs, nothing special there. I have some product information loaded for roofing. So the first thing I wanted to show you is how to do a digital document and send it so that the customer can sign it remotely via DocuSign. So what I'm gonna do is go into my contract and let's just say that I'm gonna select roofing and I want to select a uh, payment. So uh, I hit next, and this brings me to a screen that allows me to fill out my document. Now, not to get really deep in the weeds, like we can show you a whole demo of how this thing works, but you add some uh, rules in place uh, so that your sales reps can't get through uh, the entire process of generating a contract without accounting for every possible you know, option. And this is all customizable by you, uh, so any products that you want to put in this thing, you can. Any rules you want to put in it, you can. Uh, you'll notice here as I choose a color, I mean a style of shingle, in this case it's roofing, but it could be any widget. As I choose a style, all of my color options change. So one of the ways you can make this super efficient is let's imagine that you get uh, an email from one of the manufacturers that a color has been discontinued or a specific faucet model is being discontinued, can't order it anymore, or something's on back order for so many months, et cetera. How do you communicate that information down to your reps? And how do you make sure that your reps do not sell that in a house? Because best case scenario, you just delay the installation process. Worst case scenario, you then have to lose the deal or refund the customer money, or it's just a bad experience for you know everybody involved. So um, when, if, a customer was to discontinue, I mean, a manufacturer was to discontinue one of these colors, I could just go into the leap back end and remove that color from this picker option. I could literally have a sales rep on his way to an appointment. And when he comes here, and if he was to sell this 25-year three-tab uh, Royal Sovereign, when he would win here, if charcoal was discontinued, it would not show charcoal on his pick list. So it would make it impossible for that rep to sell it. There's really, I mean, you could send an email, say charcoal was discontinued to your reps, but it you would virtually make it impossible for him to select that color, um, you know, as opposed to just you know sending out an email or text or how whatever the way is that you communicate with your field reps to make sure they don't sell something that's not available. 
the other thing is a lot of times in the home improvement industry, uh, there is a measure of a flight inspection which happens after the sales rep goes out to the appointment. And pictures are so valuable, uh, you know, when, when this happens. So, like, you're, I don't know, let's say you're selling windows. Uh, having a rep take a picture of every single window that is, especially ones that are being sold, but we even have companies that are even taking pictures of ones that aren't being sold and, they, and have the app categorize them. So you have a section for replacement windows, you have a section for not replaced windows, and then the, when the documents are generated, it splits them apart. So when somebody, a field rep comes out to do a remeasure, to you know get a materials list or whatever it is together, when they read over the contract of everything that's to be included, they can have photos that go along with the contract tagged to like specific room locations or product combinations or you know maybe you need a draw on the photos so this is one way that companies are really connecting sales to production by requiring their sales reps to add photos to not only their estimates but also their contracts and the photos can be used not just for production right uh, but it can also be used to make sure that the customer understands exactly what's being installed for an example let's say that i'm installing gutters and I want to go in here and um, well, let's go back to this estimate. Let's go into roofing. I want to see if I can add a photo to this. We'll do uh, add new. And we'll just go, oh, it's my wife's iPad. So I don't even have the photos on here. So hold on, let's click on here. There you go, I'll use this one. So let's say we're putting gutters on here and I want to put uh, replace. Or actually, I'll talk into it. Replace gutters on front and back of house, period. Exclude. Detach shed. Detection. D -E -T. There you go. You get the point. Um, so then I hit done. And now I have a comment on that specific photo. Now you'll notice if I click here, so here, let me put a thing on here. This is main house. 1.1. So I tag this photo with main house 1.1. That way, if I want to do another photo 1.2, whatever. And then I put some comments on there, replace the gutters uh, on front and back of house, exclude detached set. And I hit done, and I'm going to draw a little sketch. Maybe this is the roof. Here's the attached garage. And maybe I want to mark where the downstairs are located. So I'll put little X's on the corner of the downstairs. Are. And I hit done. Um, when, when the contract comes into production, they have a photo of the house. Uh, with you know, a note, to what is that supposed to be installed? In this case, gutters, but it could be windows, could be a window still, could be some capping, could be a vest, et cetera. Uh, and you have a sketch of what we exactly install the data about. And then if you wanted to, um, you know, roll on top of the photo, you roll on top of the photo where something is supposed to be. And then when it's time to do the root measure, I just look at all, I'm able to connect the dots, customers are 100% on what is, what is not included. Uh, once I hit this next page, which is my payment page, I'm going to put in 50000 And I'm going to put a deposit of 5000 And then my form of payment. This is the other huge thing that uh, skyrocketed in usage since the pandemic. And it is a, a remote, secure card capture. Uh, one of the, you know, problems will come up when you're doing things virtually. How do you collect a payment for a customer? Credit card is kind of self-explanatory. You have the customer read the information over the phone. However, it's not PC compliant. And if you're going to store that credit card information anywhere, uh, such as in a CRM or any database, if it's not PCI compliant, then you're yourself up the risk. So how do you capture the customer's payment method and store it in a way that is secure? And if it's a check, so I collect it from a customer without meeting them in person. I mean, it's really impossible. Uh, at Leap, we have ways to do both. So if I'm selecting a check, I can just come here and put the check number in. Uh, sorry, not the check number. The accounting, the check accounting information. So the routing number, account number, and then I think checking, savings, and personal or business. So you'll put the bank account information here directly, or if the customer don't want to give you the information so the rep can type it over a Zoom or a webinar just like we're doing now, I can go to the capture late feature. And I can say, okay, well, let's do a capture any charge. And I'm going to allow the customer to pay with their bank account. Bank account only. Like if you wanted to make it to where they can't pay with the credit card, you just select bank account only. And I can put an amount where they have to pay 5000 And then initial. 
and then I could put that, that's the note, uh, a transaction, transaction description, and then I could put a note to the homeowner. This is for your initial deposit. And then when I hit done on this, uh, the customer will get in, when I send the contract, the customer will get an email that they can click a link and all of these fields will then be available for them to fill out in a PCI compliant environment. So I'm going to actually run through this process with a credit card. So if I'm doing it with a credit card, I can do the cash later. And then we will give you a way later on down the road to run the transactions as you need. And then, of course, I'm just like credit card there. But in this one, I'm just going to fill it out. So I'm going to put like Elmer, Bud. Um, what's also cool about this, why I'm filling this out, is uh, we plug into close to 100 different credit card processors. So um, more than likely, you could use this feature using your existing gateways. So if you use QuickBooks or you use, I don't know, Authorize.net or whatever it is, uh, Vantiv, I think, is another one. There's close to 100 different ones that we plug into. Um, and you can just use your existing process. Your existing now. So when I hit done, hopefully my internet behaves, it's been kind of quiet today. So that's basically you can send the information to a system channel in a PCI level one compliant environment. And then uh, returns back only the last four digits of the uh, card number or the bank account uh, account number. Uh, so what that means is we now have a way we have this captured and it's all encrypted in a server somewhere. And then you can run transactions using only little tokens. So we pass tokens around to the different gateways. And the tokens don't have any personal information in it. Um, and then it just gets it super, super secure. Even the business owner is not going to know what the customer's account information is. Um, schedule it would obviously if you types it in, but that's only if you memorize it or write it down. And if you send the customer one of those ones where they fill it out on their own, then you won't you won't ever know what the customer's credit card information is or bank account information. And since we retain the payment method, you can run multiple transactions using that payment method. So when it comes to checks, for an example, not only do you not have to pick a check up in person, but you don't have to chase the customer down to get a draw check or a completion check. You can just put some terms and conditions and stuff in your contract that says, hey, when at this point we're going to take a draw or we're not this completion step, we're going to take, you know, run the final amount, and then you have all the payment method information on file to run that transaction. Um, so I'm going to select this, finance option, whatever. I'm going to hit next, and then my document is generated. So, um, you know, without going in depth, I don't want to you know, take up too much time on the webinar showing you how the whole document engine and stuff works, but you can see uh, there should be a little tag right here uh, towards the bottom, you know, quarter where it says photos attached at the end of the contract. It says main house 1.1, and it says replace gutters on front and back of house, exclude detached shed. So it's a way that I can add, like, comments about the photos in line on the contract, but then when I go to the end, I should have the actual photos. And you see there at the very top it said main house 1.1. So all of my photos will be here at the end. And then when I go to the front of the document, the comments for each photo will be in line, in line on the contract. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you on your payment part, you know, um, you know, is uh, only the little for you of it. And it will turn off the screen and hit sign. It says, the DocuSign part that I was talking about. Obviously, you know, like a sales rep, for instance, could sign his part if he's generating the contract with his finger, and then that will get printed on the document. And then the part for a customer, I just select their email address, and then hit Next. I'm going to do that on each page so you can see how it works. And this also works with the husband and wife, and you need them to sign in different spots. So if I had a husband and wife, you can select a different email address for each spot. And it will send it off to the first person. Um, let's say the husband it was sent to first. They will get their email. They click through it in the DocuSign, and every spot that they're supposed to sign will be done automatically. The second person on the list will get the DocuSign. We'll get it with the, the first person's signature already on it. So then they can sign. They can click through and sign it as you know as needed. Spot the locations needed, and then once it's complete, 
uh, however you set up your rules, like let's say you use a CRM, we can have that document automatically upload with the DocuSign, the remote signatures on it, into your CRM. So I could send a document out on a Friday, uh, right before I leave, leave work. Um, customer could open that up Saturday morning, they could sign it, husband gets it Saturday night, signs it. It's, when you come in Monday morning, it's auto, everything's just going to be uploaded. You're going to have your emails go where they're supposed to go. Everything's going to be in the CRM, and you can just go ahead and start your production process. One of the uh, coolest feedback that I got was uh, we had a customer sign up that said um, when they signed up with Leap, they actually had an issue with the 3D right to cancel uh, in their state because before Leap, they would you know sign up a contract, and by the time the sales rep got everything back to the office, it got scanned, uploaded into the CRM, and the thing was moved to the next step. The three-day right to cancel was was up. You know, sales rep sells a deal on a Monday, turns it in on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. You know, whoever is works the office manager, whatever, doesn't get to it till the end of the day or the next day, whatever it is. And just the process of getting it to the next step took more than three days. So they said the three-day right to cancel was really never an issue for the company because by the time that they got done what they needed to get done, the three-day the right to cancel had already um, come and gone. So with Leap, since everything was uploaded instantly, they were like, everything that we needed to move it to the next step was already in the CRM. So we had to figure out, well, how are we going to address the three-day right to cancel? Because, you know, do we go ahead and move it through the process and schedule a guy to come out and we, you know, take it all down thing? Or do we just sit on it for three days? I don't know what they ended up deciding, but I thought that that was pretty, pretty neat, how Leap was able to just completely shave off three, four days of a process just by turning it on, really no additional effort had to be put into just by turning it on, cut down three, you know, three to four days uh, on, during their production process. And then, um, so that's a bunch of, uh, like, documenting and communication to the reps, being able to communicate um, changes to your reps, not just in, you know, contracts, like I mentioned, where one of the product colors or options is removed. How do you communicate that to your reps? Uh, any brochures, warranty information, that can all be communicated through LEAP. We have a whole section for resources, so you can make sure you manage all of your reps in the field. Uh, to, to uh, as far as manage all their documents of what your reps are using in the field, make sure all their brochures are up to date. If you have any like insurance certificates, customer testimonials, promotions, finance options, any of that stuff, you can just push down to your reps with really, you don't have to tell them to do anything. The app will just sync automatically once they log into it. The last thing that I wanted to show in this webinar is a thing that we just launched. Um, it's starting to pick up a lot of traction. Uh, we fed, this was a feature request that we had a while ago, and we fast-tracked this uh, once the pandemic hit. And this was the ability to submit uh, financing uh, through a virtual or remote, um, you know, appointment. So one of the other things, like the credit card and checks, like how do you capture those remotely without having to visit the customer face-to-face? -face? Well, one of the other issues we had is how do I get a credit application filled out by the customer and do it in a way that is secure so that I can submit to my lenders. Well, Leap has direct integrations. Let's go ahead to credit applications. We have direct integrations with several um, third-party lenders. Uh, we are actually, we, I know we just signed a deal with PowerPay. If, you're, um, if you use those, they, they will be layered in um, shortly. We're hoping, um, you know, the beginning of this year, definitely. And then um, I know there's one more on deck. I don't want to mention them in case it falls through, but there's another one on deck. We keep we plan on adding more and more as time goes on. But the ones that you see here are all available now. And one of the cool things is we have uh, just launched a way that I can send the customer a credit app to be filled out the same way that they filled out their checking account information or their credit card information. So if I click into this, I can, uh, down at the bottom, I can just fill it out if I'm face-to-face -face with the customer. Uh, or I can hit this little Send Secure Credit App button down at the bottom. I can select the customer's email address, and I can put a little message here. Fill this credit app out for your bathroom project. And then when I hit Send, the customer will get an email with a link that they can open up and have your company logo at the top of it. You can put a little message and a disclosure at the bottom so they know, like, you know, terms and conditions and blah, 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 blah. And you can actually customize what field you ask your customer to fill out. So obviously their name, their address, social, maybe you want some income information, blah, 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 blah. Um, we have some templates that you can use to make this super easy. Um, but once your customer fills it out, the rep will get a notification on their iPad to let them know that, hey, this customer filled it out. 
then what happens is instead of coming in here and filling all this thing out, I can then just go directly to one of the lenders. Let's say you use Green Sky. I could go into Green Sky and all of these fields would just be filled out for me. Um, what's also cool is it's super secure because none of the fields except the customer's name, first and last name, will be visible to the ref. They will come over with like little dots, um, like a password field, um, so that your rep can't see it. But then I can continue through the entire application process of any, let's see here, let's go to um, service should be good. Yeah, I can go to any one of these credit apps and all the data that the customer filled out can be used to submit to any one of these lenders. Um, so, uh, you know, in, in a sense, you know, I, when I used to do in home sales, I always offered financing because that would increase my dollars per ticket. Uh, I could increase my closing percentage. It was just easier to sell financing than it was to have the customer write down, uh, you know, one third a check for one third deposit, um, you know, and then leave out of their house and they won't hear, see any any work getting done for another couple weeks. So offering financing allowed me to do it with like a no money down. Like, hey, there's no, you don't have to pay anything until the job's done, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, this is a way to do it securely. You, this is not just for, you know, pandemic use or virtual presentation use. You can also use this to be more efficient in the house with the homeowner. So imagine your sales rep is sitting at the kitchen table. Instead of sliding my iPad over to the homeowner or even a piece of paper for the customer to fill out their credit information, I can just say, hey, I'm going to send you a link to your email real quick. If you can just open that up on your device while I'm filling out the contract, you can go ahead and start filling out the credit app, right? And then now you're just doing that, being much more efficient in the house. By the time you're done filling out the contract, you have the credit app coming to the screen, submit everything, you know, and then you're just moving forward. You just saved yourself another 15, 20 minutes in the house from having to submit that credit application to all the other lenders. So with that, I'm going to... Um, Stop sharing my screen. I'm going to kick it back to Kelly. And Kelly, I don't know if we have any questions, but I think we have time for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of questions rolling in there. So that was a, a lot of great information. So um, definitely feel free to drop your questions in there. We'll get to that in just a second. Let me go ahead and share my screen again. Okay, cool. So uh, before we jump into the Q&A, I did just want to um, uh, let everyone know about an offer that we've got going on right now. Um, and we'll do the, the drawing for the winner of the Apple AirPods right after this. Um, in a, a, if you're interested in learning more about LEAP, we'd love to uh, have a conversation with you. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about um, how, how LEAP works, see if it fits into your business, and just kind of uh, have a conversation to understand, you know, what would work best for you. So let me go ahead and launch this poll here. And if you're uh, interested in learning more, go ahead and check off that box there. Um, and it just uh, show you our appreciation. We'll send you a gift card for um, a free lunch. So a DoorDash or Uber Eats gift card. Um, pretty cool opportunity. Um, and I think for, if nothing else, it's good to, uh, our, our reps talk to a lot of people, a lot of contractors throughout the industry. So they've got like a, a whole wealth of information uh, to share. Um, they're just a great sounding board to talk a little bit about your business, uh, understand maybe where some of your efficiencies might be, what you're really good at, um, and, uh, and just bounce some ideas off of them. Um, so I, I find these conversations to be like really beneficial, like even if it ends up not being a great fit for, for you um, on the lead side of things, I feel like having these conversations is, can only help you in the long run. So um, I, I definitely encourage you to take advantage of that offer and uh, we'd love to send you that lunch on us. Uh, so I'll leave that up for just a moment and I'll go ahead and pull our winner here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close out of our poll here. And our winner for our Apple AirPods today is Rod Coombs. Rod, congratulations. I will reach out to you via email after the webinar today to uh, confirm your mailing address and, uh, and we'll get that out to you. So congratulations and, and thanks for being on with us today. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and we'll jump into our Q&A section. Uh, we do have a couple of questions while in here. Uh, our first question is coming in from Britt. Um, Britt would like to know if Leap completely integrates with QuickBooks Online. 
Um, so directly, the short answer is no, but um, the other short answer is we do integrate, we just launched this as well, uh, with a third-party tool called Zapier, and all of the information that from that leap generates, whether it's a, a document or the estimate or uh, like the credit card transactions that go through our credit card capture, we can push them to Zapier, and then Zapier allows you to connect one app to another. So I guess the other short, long answer is yes, it can connect to QuickBooks, but you have to go through a tool called Zapier. And if you're not familiar with it, just Google Zapier, and it's not just for Leap. You can connect it to all kinds of different things. Like you connect Leap to Microsoft Office, you can connect Leap to um, any a bunch of CRMs or QuickBooks, or there's a ton of things. There's just thousands of apps that you can connect other apps to. Cool, great, thanks. Hope that answers your question, Britt. Um, next question coming in from Sean. So if I don't use one of the Leap lenders, can I still use the financing feature to capture the information and send it back to the office? Um, yes, so it's funny you asked that. So we actually have an update coming out, um, I think it's within probably the next 60 days, that the credit app that you sent, the secure credit that I just showed you, as a, as if you download the app today and use it, you can only submit it to our partner lenders. But we have an update that is currently in flight, like, uh, like I said, should be within the next 60 days, that will allow you to view the actual entries from our dashboard. Now it, you have to do, like there's passwords and permissions and stuff that you have to set up. We can help you out with that. We can give you a, a, a more in-depth tour. But yes, you can access all of the fields that the customer filled out from our dashboard with an update that's coming out probably within the next two months. Great, thanks for that, Steve. Um, the next question coming in from Mike. Uh, what CRMs does Leap integrate with? All right, let me see if I can remember them off the top of my head. Uh, Market Sharp, <laughs> Salesforce, Improve It 360, Leap Perfection, Job Nimbus, and um, we're getting ready to launch Job Progress. So Job Progress is pretty much done, it's in testing, and we'll launch that thing probably the next month or two as well. Um, also, we have the Zapier, integration and if you look up zapier if any of those ones that i just mentioned are not the one that you use uh, check out zapier's website and see if your crm is in there and if it is then most of the stuff we can just use we can integrate by way of zapier perfect and a follow-up integration question on that um, do you integrate with any measurement tools yes um, measurement tools, I believe they're referring to like Eagle View and Hover. So we currently integrate with Eagle View, Hover, and um, Scope Technology, Scope Cutter Scope, you know, signing scope, those types of things. We do all of those. Perfect. All right. Um, looks like the last question we've got here um, is regarding like the uh, the technology that you use for Leap. So. Um, is Leap only accessible on iPads? And if you're using Leap in the home, do you need to be connected to the internet when you meet with the homeowners? Yep, that's a great question. So the uh, the actual app, like you're going to use in the field, that is iPad only or iOS only. It'll also work with an iPhone, but it, yes, it will work with an iPad. I mean, it will only work with an iPad. Um, the dashboard, like all the information that is communicated out of the field reps back to the home office, it can be used in anything that has the browsers. It's just a website. So, um, the field app, you need need iOS, but everything else, you just need um, a web a browser. And what was the second part of that question? Uh, that was it, about the devices that okay. you can use it on and the internet connection. Yeah, I yeah, think you got oh, it. internet connection. Uh, no, you do not need an internet connection to use it in the field. Uh, there are There's an asterisk on that. So there's a, um, the credit app submission requires an internet connection. You need that to submit a credit application. And I think there's two more. One of them is need an internet connection uh, for the secure credit card capture because that's all done in real time. Secure, there's no way to capture credit card securely unless you do it over the internet uh, securely. And uh, mm -hmm. third one was um, we have a, a direct integration with a manufacturer called Provia. So if you sell Provia doors and you want to use our, our integration with them, that also requires you to have an internet connection. Other than that, sending documents, sending DocuSigns, generate any type of document, any estimate, price, 
looking up, calculating a monthly payment for the homeowner, all that stuff can be done offline. Awesome. Thanks for that, Steve. All right, it looks like that's all the questions that we have in for today. Um, if you think of anything um, after you leave the call today, feel free to um, submit those into this marketing at leaptodigital.com email address. That goes directly to me, so um, I can hook you up with some answers from Steve or, or one of the folks on our team here. So feel free to um, reach out after the webinar if you have any additional questions. Um, so as you leave the webinar today, you'll see a short survey pop up. We'd love to get your feedback on today's presentation. And if you have any thoughts or ideas about things you'd like to hear about for the future, we'd love to hear about um, what is of interest to you. So I uh, really appreciate everyone's time on the call today. Thanks, Steve, for being on and, and walking us through all that great information. Um, any closing words before we close out for the day, Steve? No, and if you have, you have any questions, you know, just like Kelly said, just reach out. We'd love to go through an in-depth demo. So anything I wasn't able to answer, um, you know, on this webinar fully, we'd be happy to jump on and, and just go in-depth with, like, any example you want to say. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks again, Steve. Thanks again, everyone, for Thanks. joining us today, and have a great afternoon.